watch my palette of the month September palette video last month then you'll remember that or you might remember you might have more important things that you're actually thinking about than my palette that I'm using um but yeah I decided to use just a palette of these three colors the dark indigo orange and light blue and this is the sketchbook I filled it's a pretty small sketchbook so didn't take me long I just think this is a perfect size sketchbook actually for a monthly challenge it's not too challenging to fill the whole sketchbook but it's not too small either and this is the little green tree sketchbook I can't remember how many pages I think maybe 24 so let's get started this was the first picture I did just to test out my materials it's a sardine can in case you couldn't see that from the picture Mm. And that's in pencil marker and I think echo line marker then this was an Instagram challenge and I haven't written down what the challenge name was so I'll look that up and put that on this picture it was fun doing all these windows with the shutters and again the dark indigo luminance pencil dark indigo I think that's the pit jewel marker and light blue I think Karen Dash this you've probably seen elsewhere in this video it was done on location I love this building with the tower though I missed out part of the tower here <laughs> oh but still quite like it and same materials here as the previous one then this was draw. I'm not sure if this was a challenge or from one of my own photos. I think it could be one of my own photos I took when I was in London. And yes, yeah, similar materials. Then this was, again, one of my own photos. I was trying to keep this very loose. This was in Romania. I went to the Black Sea. I can't remember, remember the name of the town, but yeah, in Romania. And there was this gorgeous building that had been abandoned I think it was ex hotel ex casino ex a lot of things and now yeah just on the water's edge abandoned and similar materials here the blue marker this is the Derwent Sanguine and yeah the dark indigo again with the dark indigo then this oh my goodness this was so challenging so demanding getting all these bits and pieces this was a photo of from unsplash the unsplash side of a building in melbourne and i'm not sure where it is i'd like to go and see the actual building because it's an amazing building but yeah it just took me a long time a lot longer than i normally take when i'm doing a sketch and yeah the derwent sanguine pencil the i think that was the light blue marker and the dark indigo pencil I think I went through two dark indigo pencils on this so I had to keep sharpening it to get the get it just the right right what do you call it like right lead size for doing all this detailed work this was from another reference photo on Unsplashed mm, not that happy with it but yeah there's some bits I like I like this building here but sort of the definition of these buildings continuing down below the railway tracks I think hasn't come out so well probably needs to be a bit more variation in the tones between the railway tracks and these buildings here then this again from one of my own photos taken in Tokyo and by this stage I was starting to get sick of just using the same old like marker and pencil combination so I grabbed out some of my inks and started using those to get a bit more variety in my work so I started this one off in pencil and marker and then added some ink to it then this one this was all in inks I think this is the burnt sienna in the echo line ink and the navy again in the echo line ink i think i'll double check that though and so i did this using some with uh 
Chinese brush and some with the dip pen to get some of the more detailed bits in it and then added a bit of white coloured pencil over the top. I put in some birds because I spilled the ink there. <laughs> I really like how the inks merge into each other and get these nice colour things happening. That was from my own photo from Venice. Then this one, this was London, Tower of London. And yeah, I was just trying to get in the basic shapes. I actually put some red ink. I was using Sennelia ink pens for this. Um, and the red and the burnt sienna pens are really hard to differentiate when you're getting them out of the packet. So I picked this up and started using it and it was the red, not the burnt sienna. So I went outside the challenge guidelines I set for myself, but what you going to do? And this one also in ink. This was from a photo from Month's Flash. I really want to start practicing the New York skyline for when I travel there next month. And yeah, again, I think this was the Sennelier ink pens. And then some colored pencil added in. And this one I'm not so happy with. This was another challenge from Instagram. I'll put the challenge name up. Hopefully I'll remember to do that when I upload the video. Um, I started doing it. I wasn't really happy. So then I had these like roof shapes and decided to just really get in with the mark making and texture on these just to add some interest to the pitch because otherwise it was just too much roof and not a lot happening. And so that was my sketchbook for September. I will later on in this video go through and work out what my October palette's going to be. So stay tuned for that. I won this set of watercolours from um, Royal Talents, this is the Van Gogh Pinks and Violets watercolour set. It's not something I would have ever thought of buying for myself, to having a palette that's specifically Pinks and Violets, but it's a nice little set and really keen to test it out. I also got these couple of packets of watercolour paper with it. Bonus, I also got this cute little travel watercolour brush. Time to unwrap all these little guys.
there were no colour names on the packaging, just the colour numbers, so I haven't bothered to write that in while I swatch. The little travel brush was really nice to use. I thought having such a small brush might be a bit too fiddly, but it lays down the colour really nicely and I was very happy with it. Interestingly, even though this is a pinks and violet set, the first couple of colours I've swatched are more red and blue. I quite like that have included that even this third color is quite red. One of the things I didn't like about this set is that they've got that space at the top with their logo. There could have been an extra three slots in there to put in some more half pans. I would have liked to have had a yellow and a green in this set. I think a set like this in these colors you're going to be using mainly for florals. So having the green and yellow shades to add in some foliage as well would make it definitely a more versatile paint set, especially for painting on location. If you're painting in the studio, you can always grab other paint shades from different sets, but yeah, you don't want to take more than one paint set out with you. I guess the other alternative would be to take some of the half pans out of this set and replace them with other colors, but because of their design of the palette, I think you would need to have other paints in the Van Gogh range. I um, don't think your normal size half pants would fit, though I haven't tested that. This was one of the watercolour paintings I did last month. As you can see, the um, colours from this set have come out really gorgeous and vibrant. I was really happy how they performed in a painting. So after testing, swatching, painting, everything with this Van Gogh, Van Gogh paint set, I'm quite happy with it, really happy with it. I there is some stuff that I really love. The colours are really vibrant, um, which I'm sure you can see in the swatches, and really easy to work with. They activate easily, and it's a great little set. I also found out something, I only found this out when I was looking this up on Amazon to put in my description. With the travel brush, you've got that sticky outfit in the end, I had no idea why it was like that, didn't even really pay much attention. You can use this to get the these water wells, these paint wells, the whole top section out. So you've got a whole separate palette to the paint set, which could be super convenient. I mean, you could even put a swatch card or something in here and you've got it safe under the, the little palette. So that is a great design feature. The other thing I like about it, again, you can use this brush end to get your half pans out. I have to say, I really love the design of this palette, how these are embedded into the palette. All the little half pans are embedded into the palette compared to, I'm sure everyone's seen these or has one of these, where you just have the metal tin with paints. I've got these in with double-sided tape and you go to use the paint you go to use paint and these some of these are really stable like I probably would have to use a lot of force to get them out but then others just don't seem to stick and you have them floating around that one's actually on a magnet and the magnets come off but yeah and so I feel like the paints are actually more stable in the palette with this this little palette the other thing, I mentioned earlier that I thought the half pans were a different size to normal half pans, but I actually tested that out. This is a half pan just that I bought and filled with Daniel Smith paint, a regular half pan, and it's 
actually a bit tight to get in there but I don't want to force it <laughs> but yeah I could get it in if I used a bit of force so yeah that this little Van Gogh Van Gogh however you wish to pronounce his name palette is one I definitely I'm trying to get this travel brush back in and this is one reason why I've never bought travel brushes because I know that I would not be able to get the brush all the travel brushes that come apart like this back into here without the bristles bending and that's what's happening here so I'm not sure if they will go back into shape once it's wet but look it's really bad Anyway, yeah, I would definitely be a great set if you were just getting, well, maybe not this set, but the brand, the Van Gogh brand would be great if you were just a beginner to watercolour or you didn't want to commit too heavily. You just wanted a nice little basic set to take out to do some travel painting, sketching on location. I definitely don't see a situation where I'd be using a single colour or single colour shades palette like this. Um, that's not something that I would be really into. You can get other little paint kits in the range that are a more varied colour, like your basic colours. And yeah, if that's if you're looking to get into watercolour, definitely have a look at those they're quite reasonably priced and yes i said it would be a great travel sketching kit i'm actually thinking when i go overseas next month this month um i might replace some of the purples with other colors in this and just take this as my travel watercolor kit got my little brush got the removable palette and yeah 12 colors should be more than enough so two thumbs up, two thumbs up. And thank you, Royal Talons, for letting me win your competition. Well, for picking me as the winner. My October, October limited colour palette. What colours am I using for October? Well, let's start off. It's springtime here in Australia. A lot of people don't seem to realise that Australia, well, the Southern Hemisphere has different um, seasons to the Northern Hemisphere. Like, you know, I keep getting these emails. Ooh, it's autumn. And it's like, well, not for me, it isn't. But yeah, it's springtime here, so I've got a very spring-based palette. So this will be my October palette, but I'll only be using it for half the month because I'm heading to New York in the middle of the month. And what? so what I thought I might do is have it as an October-November palette, use it for half of, first half of October, second half of November. So I'm starting off with a pink. I really love this ant pink in the... Caran d'Ache Luminance. Then I was trying to find some the same pink in other materials. Couldn't quite get anything the same, but I do have the Tombow 723. They don't have colour names. And I think they were the only pinks I could find without going into paint. I haven't got paints here today with my swatches because. Uh, with paints you can mix colors so i'm not getting just one specific color out so next up i love this blue such a beautiful bright blue that is the 671 in the karen dash i'm not going to try and pronounce the name of it but 671 then alongside that I was trying to find colours to match in my markers and I found these 
Fibralo brush mark is the best. And then I realized, yeah, the Karen Dash. So, of course, they're going to match closer to the Karen Dash luminance pencils in color. But, yeah, that's similar blue. And then also the Echo line. This is not quite as good a match, but it's quite similar. Then next up, I actually selected these by going through and finding the luminance pencils that I liked and then getting other materials that were similar in shade, similar colours so that I could multimedia it up. So that's, yeah, again, the nice bright spring green. And with that, I've got this. This is 131 in the Tombows. And then I wanted to go for the sap green. I really love the sap green in the Illuminance. Dark sap green. Since I want to not use dark indigo this month. Whoa, well, yeah, I'm going now. I'm not using the dark indigo. Yeah, since I wasn't using that, I thought the dark sap green. It's good to add a bit of darkness to the palette. Now, this is... I couldn't really find greens in other materials that were as dark, but the Baby Castell Permanent Green Olive comes close. And then again, using the Caran Dash marker. I don't think these have colour names. They might just have numbers. That's more of a bottle green. But it's about as close as I could get. And then lastly, I've got the brown ochre, 50%. I was going to go for a bright yellow, but I kind of feel with these three colours, having another bright would just be a bit much. So I thought the ochre was a better choice there. And the Albert Dura watercolour marker in the green gold was about as close as I could get to that. So this is my October palette. I'm just going to try some layering on that. Feel this brown ochre could be good to dull down some of the bright colours when I need to do that. Really love that pink and green together such spring colour combination. So yeah, I think that's going to be a nice little October, November spring palette. So let me know if you've got a special palette for spring or autumn, depending on where it is where you live. And what's your favourite season? Mine's spring. That's when my birthday is. It was my birthday this month. September. Yeah, Virgo. And otherwise, keep watching for more exciting videos. Thanks for watching. See you next week.